All right, social doc, interview number 24. Take one. Ah, my eye! Oh, my eye! Hi, my name is Dave Schrader. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris Fleming. I guess when I first realized that something was going on when I was a little kid, I was about four or five years old and started sensing that something was in the room with me, either looking at me or kind of watching me. At first, it seemed very odd. I mean, when you're used to your environment, especially as a kid, you know where your toys are, you know where this is, you know where that is. But when you start feeling that there's someone in there, it gets pretty weird, pretty odd. And you go into the hallway and you look and you realize there's no one there. And you go downstairs and you go, Mom, did you come into my room? Or were you looking in my room? She's like, no. Then when you start hearing the voices, when you hear someone call your name, you go into the hallway and no one's there, it starts to freak you out a little bit. But yet, I didn't know who it was. It wasn't really until I was tapped on the shoulder that I started getting some type of physical contact. And when I got that physical contact, I started realizing that there was someone else that was there. I wasn't able to see them yet. When I saw my first ghost, it was actually terrifying because I was actually face to face with them. And when I saw this, I was so scared that I basically said, please, you know, don't hurt me. I just want to get in bed. And as it glided away from me and I jumped in bed, I was now able to see it in a more comfortable, uh, I would say more secure position because I was in the bed holding the sheets up looking at this thing that was now hovering there. I started having dreams that were coming true and as I started seeing more ghosts I became more familiar with a sense that I have a feeling they're going to be here tonight. I have a feeling they're here and I would wake up and I'm like they're here. I wouldn't see anything yet and then I would begin to see them. So I started realizing not at the time that I was psychic. I didn't know what to call it. I didn't know what it was. It wasn't too many years later that I realized I had a sixth sense and I had ESP. It's different now. I feel more like I belong. I mean, growing up as a kid, I never felt like I belonged because of the things that I saw. I was very fortunate that I was also an athlete. And being an athlete growing up in grade school, especially high school and college, that when I told my stories to people I felt comfortable with, they didn't believe me. I really didn't care because they really wouldn't say it to my face at that time because they you know, I'd probably punch them or do something, right? Um, but there were a few that did uh, make jokes, you know, and it was kind of uncomfortable and it did affect quite a few relationships, I believe, uh, not only with friends um, to where I had to stand up to them, but also, um, you know, girlfriends and stuff and dating. It was sometimes, you know, always weird, always got these stories. So it wasn't, it wasn't easy, I would say. There still is a perception from some people I run into uh, where they don't believe it. I got an email from a kid that um, I was friends with second and third grade and third grade slept over my house, saw a ghost. And he recently, about a year ago, sent me a message on Facebook. He's like, oh my God, I saw your program in Japan. He says, I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I said, that's Chris Fleming. He's like, we went to grade school together, everything. And I said, well, of course I remember you. I remember the kid that saw the ghost in my house. But he's like, I can't believe you're still doing this. He goes. God bless you. He's like, I'm so happy to see you're doing this that you never, no matter what you went through, the trials and tribulations in grade school, because he witnessed it, he was there, you still you know, held your ground and you're still doing this. So it was nice to, uh, to get that message so many years later. The one thing that still bothers me is that some psychics out there that don't use any of this equipment, and I think it's important that they do, and then you have some people that don't even use their senses at all and rely 100% on the equipment. I myself even sometimes go different ways where I'm relying too much on the equipment and not on my senses. You rely on your senses first to see what you feel by the ambiance and the awareness in the room. Go towards that. Once you feel something different than what you felt before, then you use the equipment. Otherwise, it's no different than running around with equipment, wasting all your time. You don't do that when you go fishing. Fishing, you go to the part of the lake that you have heard and you know that there is fish. And you go to the areas that you believe you're going to have the best luck. Well, using your senses, you guide your sense to that area. And once you get there, then you use the devices to try to confirm that. And uh, I think that's very important. But I think the biggest thing is for people to open themselves up to all these devices. Remember, they are research devices. If they don't work for you, it doesn't mean it's going to not work for somebody else. Keep in mind, you know, it was uh, 
Edison that was using the light bulb was trying to make a better light bulb. Everybody thinks he, he created the light bulb. He didn't create the light bulb. He created a better light bulb than what existed. But it took him a thousand times to create that light bulb that he believed was suitable. So if you're going to go out there and do one or two experiments and say, oh, it doesn't work, well, guess what? You're not a scientist. You're not a researcher. Because it doesn't always happen within the first couple times that you try. I want to say to everybody, if you're doing this, if you're in the paranormal because you want to be on TV or get a show, get out of it. Get out of it. If you're doing it because you want to get notoriety, be popular, and this type of stuff, get out of it. If you're doing this because you seriously are intrigued, you want to do the research, you want to find out the truth, and along the way, not only do you want to help yourself by expanding your consciousness, but you also want to help people and stay in it. That was excellent. Yes. Yes.